this was. This was an evil act of targeted violence. Four lives cut tragically short in a horrific act of violence. An employee opened fire with a rifle this morning inside the old National Bank downtown. This should not continue to happen. Evil should not try to prevail and take over our city. The gunman injured nine other people, three of them Louisville Metro police officers, rushing in to save lives. Police returned fire, killing the gunman. And we stopped the threat so that no additional loss of life could be taken. It may take days, weeks, or even months before investigators can make sense of what happened, but the community is encouraged to act now to show support for the victims and their families. Today ought to be focused on my friend and on everybody else's friends and loved ones that are no longer with us. Good evening to you. I'm Rick Van Hoos. I'm Vicki Dorch. Officers converged on the old National Bank just after 8.30 this morning within minutes of the first report of gunfire. We have team coverage for you tonight as we hear from witnesses and get an update on the victims' conditions. But we want to start with WLKY's Mark Vanderhoff, who is live to explain how the events unfolded this morning. Mark? Yeah, Rick, Vicki, we got a much clearer picture at a press conference here at the Emergency Command Center this afternoon. It was a very emotional press conference. It turns out that Mayor Craig Greenberg and Governor Andy Bashir were close friends with one of the deceased, a senior vice president at the bank named Tommy Elliott, a man who has done a lot for this city. Police say that that call came in around 8.30. It was a call of an active shooter at the old National Bank on Main Street. That's right across from Slugger Field. Police say they were on the the scene in minutes and they exchanged fire with the shooter. They were able to kill him, but three officers were hit. Now, the killer was able, I'm sorry, the shooter was able to kill three bank employees. They are Joshua Barrick, Tommy Elliott, Juliana Farmer, and Jim Tutt. And nine people were taken to the hospital. Now, at the press conference this afternoon, we heard from U of L's Dr. Jason Smith. He said three have been released already, three were being treated at the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries, but three are in critical but stable condition. They include one of those officers who was hit. He was shot in the head and had to undergo brain surgery. Let's hear from the chief and the mayor. For my LMPD officers who took it upon themselves to not wait to assess everything, but just went in to stop the threat so that more lives would not be lost. Thank you. Thank you for showing up, even when sometimes you are just felt like you're not appreciated. But I asked my officers when I addressed them today, if we don't do it, who will? And so they're very committed and their resiliency showed today and their professionalism showed today. The chief, the governor, myself, we visited in the hospital this morning with several of their families to offer them our support and our love during this unthinkable day. We will continue to offer our support and love and anything else we can provide to help them. We were also there along with several of my colleagues from Metro Council to thank and support the officers of LMPD for their hero heroic work today and every day. And say thank you to the new graduating class who was there to support their colleague, Officer Will, as he continues to fight for his life. Now, Chief Jacqueline Gwynn Villarreal said she wanted the press conference today to emphasize the victims and their families. So when she identified the shooter, she said she was only going to say his name once. And she didn't want to release any information about the shooter's motive. She said they are still investigating. And again, she wanted the emphasis to be on the victims and their families. Live at the Emergency Command Center, Mark Vanderoff. WLKY News. All right, thanks, Mark. And it has been a scary, hectic, and traumatizing day for people who live or work downtown. Dozens of police cars and other first responders blocked off the area surrounding the scene. WLKY's Madeline Carter has been there all day. She has reaction tonight from people who watched this horrific day unfold. Madeline? We hear about mass shootings across the country all the time. 
But then this one happens right here in Louisville, specifically downtown. I want to paint the picture for you. This happened right at the start of the Bourbon District here. We're just down the street from Angel's Envy, right across from Slugger Field. And behind me, just a couple blocks away, is the old National Bank building where this shooting took place. Now, if you've been walking around downtown, you've likely noticed this building. It has a very distinctive roof compared to the buildings surrounding it. But the shooting happened on the first floor. That is where we know that the gunman opened fire, killing four people. Uh, police arrived here within minutes, killing the gunman. Uh, we're still continuing to learn more details about this. But when the shooting took place, a lot of people were downtown. Downtown was open for business. It was 8.30 in the morning. And we spoke with several people who were in the area when this mass shooting happened. I was getting ready for work. And uh, I just heard just boom, 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 boom. It's really loud. I thought it was like a dump truck or something like that, you know, like just, just carrying on, you know. But then I started seeing this all cops and ambulances and police and everything just, just swarming the place. I thought it was something more than that, man. It was kind of scary, man. It's just not something you'd wake up to here in Louisville. Not downtown, at least. Shocked, um, disbelief, and then just overly sad of the loss of life. It's just happening too much. We have a society that has controlled more weapons in our society today than any place on the planet. Uh, and we just don't understand the violence and the vulgarity and the tragedy that is wreaking on our society. And earlier today, I spoke with a woman who heard the gunshots this morning. She lives just across the street from the bank building, and she said it was so loud that it sounded like it was right next to her where this happened. Uh, and I, that just shows the fact that this is affecting everyone in our community. It happened to people who live here in Louisville, they work here in Louisville, and of course, our hearts just go out to all the victims, the people who know them, uh, as we continue to learn more about this just simply tragic situation. I do wanna let you know that downtown Louisville, a good portion of it is still blocked off from the public. Uh, there's a lot of police tape. You'll notice police cars and you won't be able to get through to this area. So I just wanted you to keep that in mind. Uh, many businesses are closed as we uh, continue this investigation. Louisville Metro Police just told me they're anticipating being out here tonight for at least the next couple of hours. And of course, as soon as we can get any more details on this ongoing investigation, we're going to bring that to you right here. But for now, I'm live here in downtown Louisville. Madeline Carter, WLKY News. Thanks, Madeline. Nine victims were rushed to University Hospital from the shooting scene. One of them was LMPD officer Nicholas Wilt, who had just graduated from the police training academy. Jamie Mays is live for us outside of University Hospital with what we know about his condition and the other victims. Jamie? Rick, Vicki, now in addition to those nine patients who are being treated here at U of L Hospital, we know that four people were shot and killed inside that bank, ranging in age from 40 to 64 years old. Those nine people being treated here, we know that three are in critical condition. Another three are suffer from non-life threatening injuries and three were treated and then released. We got an update from U of L Health not too long ago. They let us know that there were three officers, three officers that were being treated here um, at the hospital. One of them in critical condition, critical but stable condition. He was just 26 years old, had just joined Louisville Metro Police Department. Here's more from Dr. Jason Smith as he talks about the condition of some of those patients. Now, I do not know what the days ahead will be. Um, I do know that they are still injured. But I also know that we are all Louisvillians, and it doesn't matter where we come from, it does not matter who we look like, we are all part of Louisville. LMPD, EMS, U of L Health, we are here for everyone. And so I would like to thank everyone who's helped us today. I would like to thank all the well wishes I've received, both personally and from our healthcare system from around the country. Support for people who have been through this around the country and know the pain that my team is currently facing, know the pain that the LMPD and EMS teams are currently facing, uh, and will be with us. Because as again, we are all Louisvillians. Now, Dr. Jason Smith also praised U of L Health, the workers, the doctors, the nurses who have been working around the clock today to treat the patients here. Back to you. Former Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher shared thoughts on Twitter. He said, in part, 
Louisville experiences a sad continuation of gun carnage in America. Those killed and injured are fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, and friends. They were all working every day to make our city better, including two police officers among the brave first responders rushing to the scene to help. Louisville and America deserve better than this. Tommy Elliott, my longtime friend of 40 years, was one of those bright lights lost today. My deepest condolences to his wife and lovely daughters and to all of those hurt by this senseless violence. May our city wrap those impacted in compassion and love. Now, once the bank scene was secured, the police SWAT team swarmed the suspect's home in South Louisville. That's right. WLKY's Randall Cam is there now on Taylor Avenue with what he's seen. Randall. Vicki, forensic investigators have wrapped up their work here, removing several large bags of evidence from the home of Connor Sturgeon, the old National Bank shooter, according to police. In addition, investigators took a laptop computer from the home where Sturgeon lived. Now, take a look at this video. This is LMPD, SWAT, and ATF moving in to clear the home of weapons, explosives, or anything of danger left behind. A neighbor watched all this happen from her porch just a few feet away. She's shocked a crime so awful could have been perpetrated by what seemed like a mild-mannered neighbor. I know it's kind of hard for me to say that I feel sorry for him, you know, but I do because I don't understand mental illness. And I think that might be what he might have been struggling with to do something like that. So I'm not just taking his side. I'm, I feel sorry for all families. 23-year-old Connor Sturgeon lived here on Taylor Avenue for one year, according to neighbors. And he attended the University of Alabama and while doing that in the summers, interned at Old National Bank for three summers and was working at the bank full time until all this happened. And we are live in the Poplar Level neighborhood. I'm Randall Cam, WLKY News. Thank you, Randall. Louisville police are getting help from the FBI with this investigation. The Bureau has created a website to collect any tips images or videos that could help with this investigation. We have that link for you on the free WLKY mobile app and on WLKY.com. We will be right back with more.